you can just make weakness to decos, like, nothing matters anymore. Huh. Now that I think about it, like, what, what actually matters? Does that matter? It used to matter. Not anymore, at least not as much as it used to. Makes you think. No! <laughs> what the hell? Oh no. All right, everyone, and hello, and welcome to a little bit of a, a free-form discussion about Update 2.0 and kind of my thoughts on it. I'm going to say, first and foremost, fights with uh, Basil, Teostra, Kushala, um, Camellios. All have been good so far. Uh, Basil was kind of a cool little neat addition. Uh, shame for all of you Lister people out there throwing that up on Twitter or on your YouTube thumbnails as soon as it was uh, found in the game. You suck. <laughs> Shame on you. Um, but overall, the, the balance feels different. Um, I'm sure somebody's going to be digging into the code at some point soon and trying to discover exactly what's going on. It does feel like things hit a little bit harder. In some cases, even with the armor upgrade, it feels like things are hitting a little bit harder as well. So um, that's good. Um, talismans appear to have been fixed. Uh, we're getting new and different talismans. Uh, that are now being generated as well as uh, some very new decorations that we'll be talking about in just a moment, which really changed the focus from needing that weakness X.2 with a level two slot to really uh, lots of different things. And we're the, the main focus of this video today is to kind of go into what we have now available to us as decorations, how that changes what we look at armor sets going forward per weapon, and then actually what that means in terms of what weapons we will likely end up uh, be focusing on the most uh, for our, our standard, you know, meta raw weapons. Um, so we may as well just get right into it. Um, this is crazy. So <laughs> I like how they just shove it right up in front of us. So Master's Touch is back in the game. It is a level two deco. Now it's no longer perfect sharpness. And I said, and you can go back in the past and you can, you can check me for this. I said that if master's touch were to come back and be balanced, it would need to be a certain percentage and not a hundred percent. And to my credit and to the credit of the, the people developing this game, that is now the case. So rather than being infinite sharpness at 100% infinity, it is now a little bit better than true razor sharp before. Uh, again, assuming you're always critting, true razor sharp, of course, you could be hitting anywhere and you'd have, you know, four times sharpness. So it's back. It's still going to be very good, especially for people that love the look or want to stay with Nargakuga weapons. I can't see how this wouldn't be the choice they would pick every single time. Um, it's good. Now, that being said, uh, Narga was great before because it had easy access to white sharpness and Handicraft was not easy to get. We got Handicraft decos now and they're level three. So not super easy to work with, but if you're trying to get that third point or that fifth point, one handicraft deco can now get you there. So there are going to be some instances where you have a weapon that has way higher raw than the equivalent Narga weapon in the tree and handicraft will get you that white or in some cases that blue and the total overall amount of raw damage on the weapon will end up being what kind of pushes you over. Um, everything else is here too. So we got a uh, spare shot as well as razor sharp that are available here. I don't see... Razor sharp being as used now that we have easy access and I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but easier access to master's touch and things like protective polish. But that being said, 
there still are not that many good chest pieces. They're just not. And the Almudron chest gives you two points of razor sharp and one point of power prolonger. For, so for things that kind of like power prolonger, things like switch axe especially, but also maybe things like charge blade, I could see there being a, a reasonable take in picking up razor sharp and using it in that way. Uh, can now more easily max up our pierce as well as our force shot, uh, as well as spread. Um, so that's going to make bow builds and light bow gun and to some extent heavy bow gun builds much more effective now, much easier to build around, uh, especially for pierce bow. Uh, we had our best pierce set on the head and that was impossible to use along with the charge up helmet. But now with this, uh, you know, with some careful crafting and maybe a good talisman. It shouldn't be that hard to max out Pierce up. Like I said, protective polish is now here. And in my mind, it's really going to be a battle between like full on critlets that are already going to be using Narga weapons, mostly staying with master's touch. And then people that are using points of handicraft or in cases when the weapon comes with just a sliver of blue or maybe a sliver of white with maybe one point of handicraft, going to be using protective polish. And especially when it comes to raw weapons and you don't really have much use for your level one slots, having three points of grinder and protective polish with the dog, it makes it fine. Like I know in world, we all hated protective polish. Back in world, it only lasted 45 seconds unless you had item pro longer. And then also it wasn't super easy to fit in speed sharpen. But I'm telling you like, it's, it's fine. It's okay. If you already have a really good protective polish uh, talisman, um, it goes along fine uh, compared to using Master's Touch. And, you know, I already know, you've seen my videos, you already know I've got a good protective polish talisman. I've got two points with a level two or level three even and like a level one slot. Um, and so it's there. A lot of new decos as well to kind of just finish everything out. Uh, maybe the whole crux of everything though and what may be changing the meta the most is this page. So weakness exploit and crit boost. Like what were they thinking? So the initial patch 1.0 for this game was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun because in certain matchups, in certain builds, you would find yourself being like, oh, you know, I could run two points of crit boost and get my way part the way up the tree in terms of getting uh, affinity. Not anymore. Um, not saying that element is dead. Not saying that status is dead. It's just those weapons have to be even better and even higher on their uh, individual categories now in order to stack up against level two decorations that can easily get you 40% extra raw damage on a crit and a such easily added tenderizer. So things like Remobra chest, things like really for the most part, like the Zenogre helm and the Zenogre chest, why would you run those anymore? Like even the Baroff chest now to me almost seems better than Zenogre. Like I'd rather have the one extra point of attack than latent power, which may, may or may not be going off. Maybe for dual blades, maybe for bow, but even then like there's gonna be better choices. So, you know, it's not to say that we're still going to be seeing nothing but Narga weapons running around with these. In a way, the easier access to Tenderize and the easier access to Crit Boost make it so that the Narga weapons, to me, feel... And we're just going to go to Longsword. Feel like uh, their relative value isn't as high. Their strengths are still very strong, right? Like 180 raw is fine up to 188 white sharpness, 40% affinity, a level two slot. This is still a very good weapon. It was a good weapon before the patch. It remains a great weapon after the patch. But what things like that do allow us to do is when we look at things like say the new Camellios weapon, it's got 30 more raw. It still has a level two slot. It's got 15% affinity. And I think I even have a set here for it and I'll, probably show it off. People will probably be like, streamer, so much, show your set. And this is obviously not finished. I still have decos and stuff that I need to work out, but look at this. Has white sharpness. 
still has white sharpness, has 30 more raw than Nargakuga, and still has a base 15% affinity with that level two slot. And it's got a weird skill, you know, and we're going to go into these, these active skills, these new rampage skills as well, but it's got, it's got some interesting things going on there. So don't, don't despair. If anything, the new content just means it's time to kind of like go back in and re-examine things all over again. Uh, it's still not that elemental and status weapons are bad. It doesn't mean it, it, but it does mean that when you're looking at weapons, the element and status has to also compete with just the absolute supremacy of how much extra damage you'll be doing with raw. And this is exactly the way it was in world. This is exactly the way it was in Iceborne. The only thing is, is now for the most part, weapons across the board are more balanced. And so, uh, they're all here. So we may as well talk about them. Uh, four new monsters that were added, Basil, Kushala, Teostra, Camellios. Uh, for the most part, I don't like the Basil weapons. Um, they give you a pretty good amount of blast. The raw is definitely above average, but at least in this case, right, it doesn't have white sharpness. Not to say the weapons need white sharpness, but it doesn't have it. It's got negative affinity. You know, 24 blast is okay. It's not great. Uh, Kushala weapons, for the most part, have very low raw. In some cases, and in this case especially, that is a ton of ice. Of course, for ice longswords, they also have to compete with the goddamn beast tier ice tree. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, special feature on it, Kushala de Orisol. Haven't made one. Haven't tested it yet. I'm assuming this is like repeat offender. And if that's the case, you can end up getting about 20, 25, 30% affinity on it. I think when it's fully ramped up, which is good. 30% bonus affinity is great. You know, that, that leaves you a lot of room. The issue is, is like, what's your raw damage doing? You know, do you have, you know, 190, 200, 210 raw? Do you have white sharpness or not? In, in this case, like the bonus affinity is nice, but you're still multiplying a relatively lower number anyways. I remember at one point in the discord, we were talking about, uh, I think it was one Barioth weapon versus the Goss Harag weapon. And I was like, well... You know, when you crit on your Barioth weapon, it's almost like you're hitting for your Gosharag weapon when it hits normally in the person who's getting really depressed. And that's that's kind of how I see the Kushala de Oro weapons. Not saying there's not an outlier, not saying we can't really come through and find something that's pretty amazing. But as it is, I don't feel like it's enough. Teostra, on the other hand, um, very interesting. So again, like 190 is when you start getting to usable raw. Blue sharpness is is fine. We, we can live with that. That's okay. What I do like, though, is that is actually a very significant amount of blast. And something that I'm really excited to test is Teostra's soul and see how that really scales with things. Again, our chest pieces are usually pretty bad. So something like the jelly chest is not that hard to use. And it already has two points of blast up with a level two slot means you could have three points of blast up with a bonus blast explosion. I would guess you would probably go from 120 maybe to 150, maybe to 180, but I don't know. Again, we have to test it, but that could actually really contribute to a lot of blast over time. And this is just talking about the long sword. You know, if we go to something like the sword and shield, maybe, you know, that's 36, you know, on drill slash with Teostra soul on something weak to blast. I mean, that's going to be a lot of extra damage. So even though it's not going to be following the traditional crit lit meta, you know, you can't, ignore the damage you get from blast or the damage you get from poison. Speaking of poison, I normally don't get that involved or interested in status great swords. However, that is a lot of poison. <laughs> you know, I think that's going to end up being around like 70 or 80 poison even with like all of like the skills up stacking on it. So that is considerable. Even with Greatsword, I think you'll end up seeing Poison hit uh, fairly often with this weapon. And it looks good, too. The interesting thing here is Camellio's Soul. So I haven't really done any testing majorly on the actual values that it gives. However, it is interesting that people were noticing in the stream that when it said boosting health, it almost looked as if I was healing from it as well. 
Uh, mind you, we were also, I think, getting occasional affinity boosts as well, uh, making that possibly a pretty interesting still to get alongside it. Now, 186 raw. If you don't, won't go Camellia Soul. I don't know. I mean, when we look at Nargakuga, you know, you have to find a way for, you know, will that poison benefit you as much as 35% affinity and a level two slot? Also considering that you need to run a decent amount of handicraft on here. Depends on how much poison the monster takes, which again, we're going to have to test it. And that's like a reoccurring theme here. Uh, Camellius armor has a special skill that once you get three points, you end up being able to extend the duration of your poison on monsters. Now, typically that's been 50%. So rather than say, uh, you know, normally, you know, around 200 to 300 damage on the monster, it could be 300 uh, to maybe 450. And then as that extended duration goes up, you also have to remember you're continuing to build up for your next poison. So it's the sort of thing that will make your poison in a way even more effective over time. Now, if we were to try and go for that, you know, on a monster with really bad hit zones, I could see the chest being acceptable. Mind's eye, you don't um, necessarily need to be hitting a spot where you would bounce. You just have to be hitting a spot that weakness exploit does not trigger on. So something like generally Magnum Aldo, I think on his back legs that triggers uh, anywhere, basically in Rakhnan Kadachi, stuff like that. Uh, arms are pretty bad. I don't think it would be worth it. Uh, Tacit, possibly, but then you'd want to be using Camellio's weapon or something like that to try and get the health steal to proc to keep you up in peak performance which can be a difficult still skill to maintain and the legs as well feel kind of weak. So unless we've got something in the game that is incredibly weak to poison or just you're in multiplayer and you want to be like the poison guy, which you could be. Um, I don't see that this will end up being incredibly useful. Kushala ends up having some just very good value pieces. Uh, having two points of handicraft in a level one slot anywhere is great. I can't see normal wrap it up being helpful on the head for bow. Possibly good on bow guns. Not bad. Uh, overall, the Kushala Blessing, you know, if you do have it, it's like kind of a nice bonus to water and ice attack. Uh, it gives you the Val Hazak skill, level three there. So it allows you to exceed the right health portion of the health gauge. So in a way, it could have a synergy with peak performance. Uh, otherwise, the chest doesn't look that good. But then again, most of the chests do look kind of bad. Arm's kind of okay. Uh, agitator's not awful. Uh, monsters do get enraged fairly quickly in this game. Uh, but again, it only has a level one slot. And we do have much better choices for weapons generally. Uh, Tacit, at least it has handicraft up. Um, but again, like I think of like the, at, um, the Anjanov Tacit is just so good. So that would again be something hard to bring along. And I don't know that one point of pierce would be that beneficial for bow gunners either. Maybe it's an option, but it's not amazing. And then the legs, um, you know, you're competing with ingot legs or monkey legs. Again, kind of hard to justify. But if you really wanted to try and make peak performance work and you didn't want to try and use the Camellio set, it's okay. Uh, we'll look at Basil and uh, Damascus first. So Basil is basically just a set that can be alternative bonuses for people that are mostly using Gunlance, possibly for Charge Blade. Always nice to have one point of guard up. Basically, the arms are a replacement for Renopolis. You're going to be able to get more or less the same value that you would be getting off your Renopolis, but then getting a one point of guard up for free, which is nice. I mean, Gunlance and especially Charge Blade both really like that. Uh, Tassa is okay. Again, Gunlance or Charge Blade. Um, you know, load up is a skill you normally take guard is fine for both of them. And it's got two level two slots. So it definitely could be some good value there. Uh, legs, um, still like that's okay. That's a level three slot is nice to have two points of artillery. Again, if you're going gun lance or charge blade, you're going to be using it anyways. And one point of guard again, remains pretty useful. Uh, head, head is still fine. You know, you got, you know, almost 
you know, two two points there that are useful, guard, artillery, and a level two slot. So if you wanted to use a full set for Gunlance or Charge Blade, you could do worse. I still don't know that it's min-max because, again, with the way that our decos exist now and the flexibility we have, you really want the most slot-efficient pieces possible. But I would say, across the board, maybe one of the best full sets added in the game for those specific um, those specific weapon types. We're going to get to you, Teostra. Uh, Flame Seal, if you do the uh, triple monster quest available in the village, I believe this unlocks. Uh, four points of crit eye. It's okay. It's not bad. Uh, there's another option that in some cases I feel might be better, but it is still fine. Uh, Damascus looks good. I don't know that it is good. Like, I'd rather have Hunter Chest that has attack up the Tremor Resistance for the chest. Uh, I don't care really about earplugs at all. Uh, again, one point of Handicraft on the task set with a level one slot just is not doing anything for me. And then two points on the on the legs. I think Kushala just straight up beats that. Well, I guess it doesn't. All right. Maybe an option for the legs. Big boy time. Uh, head on Teostra. Amazing. In most situations, this is going to be more valuable than the flame seal. The only point this would not be more valuable than the flame seal is if somehow you created a set where you were not on average hitting for at least 50% affinity. So say you were trying to make the egg work, you might end up going with flame seal over Kaiser because, you know, you might get up to 60% affinity, which I mean, I guess at that point, this, this would be better. But if you ended up short of 60% affinity, Flame Seal might end up being better. It just depends. Uh, Teostra Blessing. So the four points don't matter. However, the level one and level two is actually really nice. It's basically free bonus damage on fire or blast attack. Um, for one point of Critical Eye, for one point of Master's Touch. And then for that, if you were going for Master's Touch, that's fine. It's absolutely fine. It's a way to make your blast weapons even better than what they were before. And getting them up to 100% affinity, it makes it so that they compete just a little bit better with Nargakuga. You can see here, I've got the arms already on the wish list. So a level 2 slot, that Teostra Blessing, Crit I1, and Crit Boost 1. Like, again, it doesn't necessarily beat everything. If you need Handicraft, tactically... Magnum Allo is better because Handicraft is a much harder thing to slot in than both Crit Eye and Crit Boost now, right? But assuming you don't need Handicraft, now let's go. Or let's say you want Handicraft, but then you're also using a Blast Weapon or a Fire Weapon. You would want to use this. Uh, Tacit is fine. Again, it's not amazing if you were using a fire or a blast weapon and you just needed maybe one point of handicraft, I could see you using this. Otherwise, I think you'll still end up using, say, the Anjanoth coil. I still think that remains one of the best in the game. Uh, the legs, uh, weak, kind of. Um, you do have Master's Touch here. It's okay. It gives you, you know, I don't know that you'd nef necessarily end up using it to get your third point of Teostra Blessing. Like, I don't know. Maybe... Maybe if you're, you're fighting um, Rathian or Camellios a lot and you just don't want to even be bothered by Poison or Venom, I could see there being a benefit there. Uh, issue is if you're fighting Camellios, how often is Master's Touch going off? If you're attacking the front legs, if you're attacking the head, kind of hard to say. Okay, so I think that's going to be it for now. Uh, again, kind of just my first thought and impressions on the new weapons and armor skills and decorations that came out. Uh, makes me a little sad if I were to rebalance it, uh, and I don't even know if it would be better. I assume the team does a much better job at this than I do. I would take Weakness Exploit and Crit Boost and possibly Master's Touch and make those level 3 decos instead. Uh, the fact that we have like truly ass-tier decorations such as Mushroom Answer and, oh, where are you? Uh, jump master. Why are these level three? Jump master should be level one. 
Mushroomancer should be, I guess, level two would be balanced. If not level one, like, we have free meal as a level one deco. Like, let people eat their mushrooms. It's not a big deal. It doesn't change the game that dramatically. Whatever. So uh, I'll be streaming today at twitch.tv slash sdshepherd. I would love it to see you guys over there. I do stream every day. And I love you. Uh, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until next time, good luck. Have a good hunt. Enjoy the new content.